Hey guys, welcome to The Disruptors, the show where we get the folks who are transforming the way we think about the future. Today, we got one of them focused on a couple of different avenues, Peter Bose. Thanks for coming today, Peter. It's my pleasure. Good to talk to you. Publicity. We've talked about it a little bit here on the podcast, the, the benefits of cellular autophagy and some other reasons. But can you kind of dive into what you learned from those documentaries and what you've learned since? Yeah, well, as far as fasting is concerned, I mean, you mentioned autophagy, which is one of the, the key components, I, I think, of, of fasting. Uh, that's essentially cells eating themselves, uh, your body getting rid of those cells that are perhaps uh, past their sell-by date, they're not working as well as they should, and y your body is, is kind of regrowing. So after a period of, of fasting, you are, you're growing new white blood cells, for example. You might be growing new muscle cells, and uh, you're basically rebuilding yourself. But that's a, a forced rebuild over quite a relatively short period of, of time and uh, I think that's been shown to be to beneficial uh, and also in terms of uh, fasting over a longer period of time and um, this is one of the subjects that uh, Walter Longo has been looking into and I've covered in a, a documentary and that is the, the role of IGF-1 insulin-like growth factor 1 a secondary growth hormone which um, has been shown to if you, there's too much IGF-1 has been shown to be linked to to cancer in uh, in the latter in your latter years and uh, if you can keep that level of IGF-1 down I'm not talking about an excessively low level but if you can keep it down I think there is some evidence that that could uh, help you grow to a, a, an older age without getting some of those killer diseases of, of old age so that, that, that those are a couple of things that, that really interest me. Um, How do we fix the media and news industry? The, the technology is changing and there's not going to be a reversal there. So we're not going to go back to the old ways of consuming news. So we have to editorially be as impartial, as, as tough as possible to get fair news that is fair to, if it's a political argument, to, to both sides. I'm not one of those news reporters working for an, for an organization that has a point of view. I've got a personal point of view, but I really don't want to express that publicly in the news outlets that I'm working for. Yes, that's fine for, for some, as long as it's very clear up front where the uh, political slant is. But I think um, there's a lot of work to be done on just producing impartial news. And then a lot of work on delivering the news in a format that people find easy to consume without dumbing it down too much, without having too many three second sound bites that masquerade as a, as a full story because you just can't do that. I would say the, the intermittent fasting is something that everyone needs to try because it's really not that hard to do. Oh, totally. Yeah. Intermittent fasting. And again, uh, this will be a chapter in the book. Uh, you can hold me to this. Uh, intermittent fasting as a title, as a chapter heading, question mark, because there are so many different types of intermittent fasting. What do you mean by intermittent fasting? Is it going on a 5-2 diet? Is it going on, as some people do, a 23-1 a diet of, of not eating for 23 hours and then just having one meal a day? Is it 16-8? Is it 12-12? All of these different types of fast, you just got to look at the work of Sachin Panda, the Salk Institute. I interviewed him a few weeks ago. How different periods of, of fasting affect us in different ways. So it's a, if it's 12 hours, 13, 14, 15, 16 without food, it, it, it affects us all differently. The, the, the longer period you leave, and if you go to, let's say, 16, 8, um, the better it, it is for us in terms of exercise, and be just being able to keep on going so our endurance is actually better th the longer the period of, of fasting even but having said that even a 12 12 is still good for us we can still reap rewards but if we could just push it a little bit our endurance and he's shown this in in experiments especially with mice that our endure the endurance of, of mice certainly improves with the longer gap so it comes back to what is the best kind of intermittent fasting and maybe there should be different titles or different names for these different regimes just to make it clearer to us you know, what we're talking about what is the one thing you would want to leave people with a quote a call to action something like that i would say and we kind of touched on this that um in this frenetic world i think i would leave people with the thought that you need to be a little bit selfish with yourself and, and to the benefit of yourself and if we're talking about the whole body experience of just going through life and all the different experiences that we will encounter during the course of a day 
or a week. And some of those challenges can actually be quite difficult dealing with other people, dealing with work commands and demands and children and commuting. We lead really stressful lives. I would say build into your day. It can maybe only be 15 minutes, but ideally it's, go it's going to be an, an hour. And that might be the hour that you go for a walk with the dog, but just be a little bit selfish and just have that Zen moment.